Hi, this is Jeremy Kalafa from Pneumatica Coaching Services. Um, I hope that you're doing well and that this video is finding you well. Um, so yeah, we had a discussion on Friday, um, just the inception of our discussion on purpose. Um, we had it on from 12, 12 to 1 on, on Friday. We had um, a great group of guys just were able to pray, were able to discuss a bit and then also do some more prayer. And it was really, really great. We forgot to record. No, I forgot to record. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, but generally what, what we want to talk about is that we want to create discussions for young people around purpose, around understanding purpose from God's perspective, from how God views it, from how does God see it. And that generally was what the discussion was about, was, was setting up the foundation or, or setting up the basis of understanding purpose from God's perspective. And that's what I'd like to share on this video about just a bit about what we discussed about and then what's coming next. Because generally, for a lot of us, we view purpose from our perspective. What I mean by that is that we view purpose as us. In other words, we view it from our point of view, as in what do I get from it? How do I get this or get that? How do I satisfy this urge or this feeling? What, what do I feel? In other words, I am called to, what do I feel? What do I feel? You know, it's, it's a lot about that. It's a lot about what we get from it. But in reality, purpose is not about what we get from it. Purpose is about what God gets from it. It's what does he get from it? And I remember this week, um, I was just thinking about, because we ran a whole organization on a business on, on coaching and sports for kids. And, and as I was thinking about it, I was really thinking about it. It came to my realization that in running that whole organization and that whole business, it's not about me. It's not about us. It's not about what I want. No, it's about what the customer wants. It's about what the parents want for their children. When you think about it, it's about, even when we employ people, it's about their talents and their callings. It's about that. And lastly, it becomes about me. Even before that, it's about the government and what the, the regulations they have. And it's about God and what he visions and what he sees. And that's the same thing with us, with our lives. Our lives are, are like an organization. It's not about us. It's about God. It's about others. It's about what do they get from us, from our life. And, and that scares us sometimes because we have seen people coming into our lives and taking so much from us. And it seems as if we are left with nothing. But I'd like for us to look at purpose from the perspective of how does God view it? How does God desire it? How does God want to establish it? And so we want to come to that point of understanding that it's all about him. And a good verse is in John chapter number 17, verse 4. I'll read it for you. Um, and this is what it says. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And, and that's an amazing, amazing thing that we have to think about. That um, in reality, that's what Jesus says. This is him praying just before he's arrested, before he's taken to the cross. Because it's just moments. It's, it's a few hours before he dies and, and he says it is finished. And what he says is that I have brought to you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. That was his purpose, to finish the work that God gave him to do. And that's what our lives should be about. So what I mean by that is that when you listen to what Jesus is saying, he's saying that, hey, Father, I have finished what you gave me to do. Not what other people told me I should do. Not what I thought was the best thing for me to do. It was, no, I finished the work that you, 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 Father, told me to do this and I did it. I finished that work. 
And it shows the fulfillment and accomplishment of his purpose, of his life. And that's why Jesus lived such a successful life and such a beautiful life. He just lived for 33 years. And his ministry was just for three and a half years. Three and a half. And he did it all. And that's why he can confidently say and tell us that, hey, the work of the Father is not burdensome. It's not heavy stuff. No. It's light. My yoke is light. That's what he says. My yoke is light. You will not be striving and stressing and, and, and doing all those kinds of things. No, you will just be accomplishing step by step what I have called you to do. And, and I remember I was listening to John Carson and he was saying that they accused Jesus of so many things. But they never accused him of being too busy. They never said Jesus was too busy. This guy was too busy. He was just too busy for everyone. He was always busy, busy, busy. And, 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 and that's what I think our purpose in life is all about. Because I think for a lot of us, we have come to that place of thinking or understanding that it's the more I do. It's the more I do. That I need to do more and more and more for me to really be living out my purpose. It's for me to do, for me to have volumes and volumes and volumes. For me to do so much. I need to do everything. Ah, that's when I will have, I will have done my purpose. You know, that's when God will say, well done. But we see Jesus living, I think Jesus was an easy guy. I, I, think, I, I can't wait to meet him personally. As in, he was such an easy guy. An easy going guy. Yet he did so much because he followed and he did what God called him to do. People told him to do so many things. His brothers were like, man, you guy, you're starting a political career. You have to do this and that for you to become famous. People were like, ah, you guy, you should become our king. You have fed us with five, eh, five loaves and two fish. You become our king. We want to make you king. People had all plans and, and motives for Jesus. You know, even John, John and James are like, God, ah, Jesus, should we call down fire? Let these people know you are the prophet. You are the man. You call down fire. As if everyone had suggestions and things that they were telling him to do. But yet, every single moment he was open to the Father, listening. Saying, hey, let, this is what God wants us to do. Like even, even to the point of when his friend Lazarus is sick, Mary and Martha send a messenger and it's like, man, Jesus, you have to come now. This guy is sick to the point of death. You have to come now. And he's like, uh, the father says, wait a bit. Just wait a bit. And he waits. And the guy dies. But he knows, ah, God, God still has this. So when he comes, he's able to raise him from the dead. And, I, and, and that's the beauty of life that Jesus lived. Step by step following the will and the plan of God. That he can confidently say when he's at the end of his ministry, when he's praying, he says that I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you have given me to do. That each and every one of us will be able to give God glory. We will give God glory when we do what he has told us or what he has called us to do. Not when we do what we think or what people say or what has been preached and has been said. Ah, when you do this. No, it's, it's when we do what he has called us to. That means we need to be in relationship with him. When we do what he has called us to do. And so, for a lot of us, you know, we, we really desire to give God glory. We desire to give him all the honor. We, we desire this above all else. And we have our own thoughts or our own ways in which we think we will give God glory. I remember for myself, you know, you, you think that I think sometimes that I, I can give God glory if if I can be able to organize this huge concert and then thousands of people come and then they see him. That's when I will have given God glory. That I will have given, you know, we have these thoughts and we have these plans and we have this sort of way that we think this is the way we can give God glory. Ah, this only this way, only this way. This is surely the way. And, 
and it's it's it revolves around our plan it's it's not god's plan per se it's it's our plan it's our thought it's our thinking that hey if if i can really be able to do this and do that i will have given god glory i will have glorified him above anything else that's how we think for a lot of us, that's a kind of, of thought process or concept we come with that if I can only be able to do this, if I can only, God just help me to do this. If I can do this, I will have given you the glory. I will have given you the glory. I will have given, I, I will have given you the glory. That's how we think and that's how we approach our purpose. And that's why we go into books and seminars and all such kinds of things of, of trying to see how we can successfully establish our plan so that we can give God glory. And so in reality, in summary, or I think about it, and this is how I think about it, what we are trying to do is what we, we are saying is, hey God, I have this plan. I have this great and wonderful plan. And you see where you fit into this plan? Yeah, man. And and this plan, God, if we work this plan out, God, if, if we partner together on this plan, you and me, God, you will receive the glory. Aki, you will receive the glory. God, you will receive the glory. No lie. It's like we are pitching to a business guy. You know the way we pitch to, you know, if you join, if you join in, you will get, this is your share. This is your cut. And we're like, God, Aki God, if you just make this plan come through, you see how you will get the glory through this and through that. Ah. And I know for a lot of us, you know, especially when it comes to relationships and such kinds of things, you think like, ah, God, if, if you can connect me with this lady or with this gentleman, I I God, we we will give you the glory. Just look at how look at how we will be able to connect and match match things. Even our children, I Mungu connect us. And we think, oh God, if you just connect me with this deal, if you just connect me with this thing, if you just give me this job, I telling you, people will glorify you everywhere. They will speak your name. They will know. I. But is that genuinely true? Because I think for a lot of us, it, it comes from a place of, of an insecurity. For a lot of us, it comes from a lack of understanding, if I'd say. And I'm speaking this from my own personal conviction and from my own personal introspection into what my heart state is and what it has been on, on various occasions, on various things. that. That we are afraid at times of, of God's plan or God's desire. That we are afraid sometimes of, of, of God having the final say. Because what if, and I remember there was a time I used to wonder, what if God's plan for me is to go to Iraq? And preach the gospel there. What if that is his plan for me? And I was like, hey, Bala, that's, uh, uh, that's a heavy plan. God, you know I have plans. I have things to do, but you can't just tell me to do that. No. It's scary at times. It's scary to think about it. That, that what if God's plan is to is totally, totally different from what your goals and desires are? What if his plan is just totally on the opposite direction? And I am a living testimony of that because I remember before I even started all these things, you have a plan and you're like, God, this is the plan. This is the plan. And, and I, I remember, you know, when, when he calls you out into a different kind of path or a different way, you're like, a partner, this one, no. And, and the insecurities revolve around, hey, what will people say? What will people say? And that's why we, we, we craft this very beautiful and good plan and we call it our purpose. We craft it very well and then we, we give God a share of it and we are like, hey, at least people will have said this and that. You know, they'll be able to say this and that. And then we, we think about it and we're like, you know, a 
at least this way I can be able to get some financial gain, get some money, get a good house. At least with this plan, you know, you can you can figure things out. You can try and see how things can work out. That's that's the, the beauty of when you have your own plan. You you try and see how things can work out. You're like, eh, if this is the plan, I can be able to make this money here, I can be able to come famous like this. I can you know, we have all those kinds of, of, of thoughts and processes and, and, and thinking. And but in reality, a lot of it is driven by our fleshly desires and our fleshly wants. And the sad thing is that the flesh can never satisfy the spirit. As in, it never, can never satisfy the spirit. Because, yes, the intentions are good. Yes, we have good and great and beautiful and, and well-intended plans. We want to help people save the world and do all those kinds and sorts of things. We want to do that. No lie. We want to do that. We want to see a difference in our community. We want to do that. But also, if we are truly honest with ourselves, we want to see a change in the community, but we also want to be become famous in a way. We want to be seen. We want to, people to, to be like, ah, that's the guy. That's the guy who has helped change this community. That's the guy. If we are truly honest with ourselves, we also want to, to have some, fi some financial gain, some monetary benefits, have a good house, a good car. You know, we, we live a comfortable life. We, for a lot of us, we want that. We want some good notoriety that I must say, they will know this is the guy. This is the guy who sacrificed it for God. Ah, this guy. People will, we want our name to be on the lips of people. If we were truly honest with ourselves, that's also part of the package. And that's why it can be very scary to, to think about God's plan. Because what if his plan for you is to only minister to one person, one person only, and you will never even be known about? like, no, 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 no. You must minister to the world. We are, it is written in the, in the Bible. We are to go to the ends of the world, not just one person. You know, like a banner. What if, you know, we hear about this. What if his, his, his plan for you is to have an organization that just only impacts the lives of 20 families? Only 20 families. Only 20. Like a banner. No, 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 no. No, I 20. A banner. It's, it's, and that's what scares us. It scares us because in true, if we were truly honest with ourselves, we want some benefits. We want some benefits. And that's why for a lot of us, purpose has become more about us, more about what we gain, more about what we get. And that's why we try and, and imagine ourselves in this great and grandiose plans just so that we can have a part we can have a share of the cake but when god speaks about purpose he speaks about him having the whole cake and that's what jesus says here that because god i followed you you get all the glory you get all the honor you get all the praise and that's what God rewards. And that's why we must have a good perception and a good understanding of how God works. Because how he does his things is he rewards faithfulness. He does not reward you for, oh, I did this and I did that. No, he rewards faithfulness. If you read Matthew 25 and 26, he speaks about the guys who come there and they're like, Jesus, we did this and that for you. But he's like, I don't know you. The, the results can be seen, no denying. The results can be seen that yes, they cast out demons. Yes, they fed the poor. Yes, they healed the sick. Yes, they opened the eyes of the blind. Yes, they did all that. But Christ is like, I don't know you. That's scary for me, man. That's scary. To live a life, a whole life, whereby we have done all these things. 
only to come before him and he's like, but I didn't call you or, or ask you to do that. This is all I wanted from you. This is all I wanted from you. And that's what Mary gets. Because Mary is busy up and down, preparing things and doing all these things, thinking this is what Jesus wants. But Jesus is like, I didn't ask that from you. I did not. I did not. And, and, and sad to say, that's what a lot of us have thought our purpose is about. It's about busyness, about being up and down, about doing all these things. It's, it's, it's slowly about focusing on God and what plan he has for our lives. It's about what plan he has for our lives. And so I know for some of us, we may be wondering, how can I serve God? How can I follow God? How can I manifest his purpose? How can I understand this? How can I know what his will is for my life? Now, for some of us, we've heard that we can only truly serve God if we are in the church. But I don't feel led or called to be a pastor or such kinds of things. So some of the questions we have. And so this is just a foundation. And, and in summary, what I, I'm just trying to, to bring out or, or to share with us today is that, hey, God has a plan for you. And that plan does not revolve around you and your desires and what you want. And, and, and I know we may, we may wonder or we may think, will I then fulfill my desires? Will I be satisfied? Will, will my heart find joy and fulfillment in God's plan for me? Because this is the way I think I will find joy and fulfillment. If I go this other direction, will I really, really, really find fulfillment? Will I really enjoy life? Because I look at people who are serving God and man, those guys look miserable. I, I don't want to live a miserable life. That's just some of the questions that we have. I look at people who are serving God, who say they have become servants of God and they look miserable. They live miserable lives. I don't want to live a miserable life. And, and so we have these plans and we have these things, and these thoughts. But I'd like for us to... To, to start thinking about God's plan for us because he has a plan and he has a big picture. He has a big plan and we have a part to play in that big plan. And that is where we will find our greatest joy and satisfaction. And so in laying this foundation, I just like to, I'd like to invite you for our next discussion on Friday. It'll be on Friday at 8 p.m. Pale Zoom. We'll, we'll have a Zoom meeting for hopefully one and a half hours. We'll discuss, we'll pray, and we'll talk about God's big picture. We'll address some of these questions that we have in our hearts. That, hey, I'd like to follow God. I'd like to follow hard after God. I'd like to, to serve God. But, but man, I, would, I don't want it to be miserable. I don't want it to be, ah. No, I, I want to find joy and fulfillment. And how can I find joy and fulfillment in following after God? How can I understand what God's plan and will for my life is? That's what we'll be discussing about, God's big picture, God's big plan for our lives. And, and I hope you'll be able to join us. You can check out our page on Facebook. It's called PCS Coach. You can check us out and you can just check as the information flows by. We'll be able to post the link there or you can contact us on 0707-980845 and we'll be able to share the link with you. But if you have also any questions, we can, we can share the questions and we can discuss about these topics because I would not like for us to get to that side of heaven and, and, and only to realize and only come to that point of understanding that, hey, I did all these things, but just God wanted me to do one thing. God just wanted me to do one thing, just this one thing. And if I did just that one thing, guess what? Hey, many people are like, hey, good and faithful servant. Hey, well done. Let's not get confused or get swept away by the business of the world, which has swept into the church. 
that the only way we can do great things or great works is if we do all these things. No. God is not after volumes and such kinds of things. No. He's after faithfulness. And that's what we'll be discussing about. And so allow for me to just say a prayer as we finish up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this moment, Lord. We pray that you, O oh Lord, would cover us with your love and your faithfulness, O oh dear Heavenly Father, that you would bring us to that point of understanding that you have a plan for us and that you have called us to be faithful, not to be busy, not to do all these sorts of things, but just to be faithful to the plan that you have for us. And when we are faithful to that plan, Lord, we will give you all the glory. So help us, Father, help us prepare for Friday, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, Lord. Any questions that we have, Lord, may you just start raising them up in our hearts, Lord. May you start also looking and searching our hearts that we may understand, Lord, where are we at in terms of purpose, in terms of, of why we seek the things that we seek, why we do the things that we do, Lord. Is it that we are after money? Is it that we are after fame? Is it that we are after notoriety, wanting to be seen, wanting to be known, wanting to receive the rewards? Lord, search our hearts, expose us, Lord, and show us what it is that you are seeking within us, Lord. We thank you, Father. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. So, remember Friday at 8, come meet together on Zoom and just have a discussion. So, goodbye.